Hello and welcome back to our KO language series. Today we're going to look at some writing skills. Specifically, we're going to learn how to read back our own writing and to revise it to make it stronger so that it's ready to be submitted on the KO test itself. Now, when we start the short piece of writing on KO, we are looking at part five of the test. This is the very last question of the entire KO test. We will have 10 minutes in which to write this paragraph out and the instructions on the screen tell us exactly what we need to do. We will have to use one of the source materials that we've already either read through or listened to on the test. This is where the details for the writing will come from. We're not expected to, to have the background knowledge necessary to write this paragraph. So when we pull details out of the source, it's really important to write those ideas out using our own words. We cannot copy word for word from the reading or the listening passages on the test itself. Now, this short piece of writing is going to ask us to write at least 100 words. And we're always assessed based on the content, so how accurate the details are in the writing itself, as well as the structure. So this is a paragraph, and we need to know how to structure a paragraph appropriately. We will be using academic language throughout since this is an academic test. And last but not least, how well we cite the source material will be included as part of our score. So we can see the question at the top of the screen here. This one says, based on the reading passage, how have changes to sports equipment improved athletic performance at the Olympic Games? So this question only asks us to consider the reading passage. We don't even have to look at the listening passage. So again, remember on the test itself, on the real test, we already would have read through that reading passage. So it's very familiar to us. But at this moment, we can click on the reading passage tab and it's going to pull up the exact same long passage that we've already read. These long passages are usually about eight or nine paragraphs on average, I would say. So you can use the scroll bar right in the middle to navigate down to the bottom of the page if you need to. Now remember, you've got 10 minutes, so you're going to just skim read very quickly and pull out any relevant details. This question is asking us to look for examples of equipment, how it's improved, and then how it would improve athletes' performances too at the Olympics. We're going to type our answer right here on the writer's screen, and the word count is directly above that. So it's going to change in live time and update, so you will know when you've achieved at least 100 words as this test has asked us to do. So for today's episode, we're actually going to uh, look just at the, at the draft paragraph. We're going to assume or pretend that on the test, we've already gone through that reading passage, we pulled out some details, and this is what we've written. So on the test itself, I'm hoping you're leaving yourself about 45 seconds, even to a minute if you can, to read back your work. That's the focus of this episode today. So I'm going to ask you now, please, at home, if you could read over this paragraph. I'll give you about 20 seconds or so to skim it and start looking for ways that you could make the writing even stronger. If there are grammar and writing mistakes or spelling mistakes, please note them right now. If there are ways to add ideas in or even take ideas out to make this writing stronger, these are the types of things that you're looking for. Anyway, I'll give you some time to look it over and then we'll discuss together. Okay, if you need more time to review, that's fine. Please just pause this video and take all the time you need. I'm going to start talking about the passage now and we'll move along together. So the first thing I'll point out is right down here. It's very close. We were supposed to achieve 100 words. We've got 99 words. So at some point as we fix this paragraph up, we're going to have to add some details in. So let's start with that first sentence. I'll just make it orange so that we can all look at it together. I think the idea itself is along the right track. I mean, we are starting to introduce the topic about how sporting equipment is improving athletes' performances. But there are two things that I think we can fix up here to make this even better. Let's look at the language choices first. So right now it says advancements in technology 
used to design sporting equipment has improved athletes' performances. Advancements in technology works, but I think if we were to reverse the order of these phrases, if I can take that word technology and turn it into an adjective like this, technological advancements just sounds higher level. So that's an easy fix to make. So that's one we'll do right now. Use to design sporting equipment. I'm just going to make that a bit simpler. So technological advancements in sporting equipment. There's a grammar mistake. This is a subject verb agreement issue. So the word has is a singular verb, but the subject of this sentence is advancements, plural. So it's easy to fix once you recognize the mistake. We'll just change that verb and make it plural as well. So it becomes have. So these advancements have improved athletes' performances. Again, it's fine, but it just sounds a little simple. So I'm going to use the same strategy I did earlier. I'd like to take that word athlete and turn it into an adjective to make it athletic performances. I'm also going to add in the word greatly. It's an adverb. And I think, again, it just emphasizes how strongly improved the equipment is. So all in all here, I think this green revision is a lot stronger than how we started. Now, it is a good start, but I'm noticing that we're missing half the question. The question asks us to consider specifically the Olympic Games, and we haven't even mentioned the Olympics anywhere in this paragraph. So let's fix that now. Can we just continue this sentence and add something in about the Olympics? So we're adding in this phrase now. So these advancements have improved athletic performances in many sporting events, most notably the Olympic Games. So there, I think now we've got a very strong topic sentence. The language is elevated too. So let's move on to the next part of this passage. Looks like in orange, we've got our first specific detail. It says weightlifters now use dumbbell bars that are covered with rubber. So since we're giving examples of equipment and showing how it's improved, can we please add a transition? We've gone from the topic sentence, which introduces this concept, to our first detail. So by adding in a very simple transition like this, we're connecting the ideas more smoothly. For example, we say, weightlifters now use dumbbell bars. There's a spelling mistake there. Really easy to fix. You just have to notice the error. So dumbbell has two Bs. So let's fix that now. So weightlifters use dumbbell bars that are covered with rubber. And I think that's fine. This allows them to grip the bars more firmly and lift heavier weights. Okay, the idea works. So we've shown how dumbbells are, are better. They're covered with rubber. We're now showing how that improves the athlete's performance. The fact that they can grip firmly and lift heavier. So this is answering the question. The idea is just fine. What I'm a little bit worried about though is my sentence structure. So these two sentences are a little bit simple. So what I'd like to do then is I'm going to continue the sentence along. So instead of finishing the sentence at rubber and starting new, I'm going to connect these two sentences together. So I've added a comma after the word rubber and I changed this second sentence altogether really. So if we wanted to look back, we did have this allows them. Once we connect them, we're just saying allowing for. Here we've got stronger grips and attempts at lifting heavier weights. So again, it just flows a lot more smoothly that way. So we're not changing the idea. It's just the language that we're playing around with. So we've created now a correct complex sentence. This is what we want to do on the test. The more complexity we can demonstrate, the better overall. So let's move on now to our second example. It looks like this one is all about bicycles and how they've improved for cyclists at the Olympics. I'll read the two sentences together here, and let's look for ways that we can make this even stronger. We've got cyclists now drive bikes that use carbon fiber technology that was originally used in the construction of airplanes. These bikes now weigh under four pounds and can be ridden faster than any time in the past. Okay, so again, the ideas are great. We know how the bikes, um, have been improved and then how that has improved athletes performances. So again, the idea is just, just fine. I did notice though a repetition. I'm not sure if you noticed it, so I'd like to point it out for you. I've used the word now three times in such a short paragraph. So 
I think that's too much. It, it tends to sound, again, too repetitive. So we can fix this maybe by eliminating one of them at the very least. Can we take out that second example of the word now? Let's do this. Let's just cross out the way we're starting. So instead of saying cyclists now drive bikes that use blah, 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 let's start our sentence with the word using. So using carbon fiber technology that was originally used in the construction of airplanes. So now I've repeated the word used. <laughs> so I'm going to have to change up the second half of the sentence if I want to make it better. This is easily done by swapping out the verbs. So using carbon fiber technology developed in the construction of airplanes. That sounds a lot more concise and to the point. I've eliminated the use of the word now. I've not repeated the word using and I'm setting myself up for another complex sentence. So the way this is written right now, it's, it's actually a fragment. It's half of a sentence that doesn't complete the idea. All I need to do to fix that big mistake is to turn this period into a comma and continue the sentence right along. So obviously I need to change the, the T to a smaller case so that it's one sentence now. So let's examine the whole thing in one and see how it sounds. So it says, using carbon fiber technology developed in the construction of airplanes, these bikes now weigh under four pounds and can be ridden faster than any time in the past. Great. So we have another complex sentence, and that's going to help us with our, our overall score there on the Kale test. The only other small thing I would adjust now is here. Because I rewrote the sentence, I took out that part about bicycles in the beginning. By saying here, these bikes, doesn't really make sense. I've not introduced bikes anywhere. So I can't say these bikes. Instead, I want to use something a bit more, uh, more general. But let's just name the item. Since we're talking about bicycles being very light anyway, I'll use that adjective lightweight as a descriptive word. And instead of saying bike, I think bike is a bit casual anyway. Can we just use bicycles? It means the same thing. But again, it's just more precise this way. So we've now fixed up that second detail and I think it's a lot better anyways than how we started. That third detail looks like it's all about arrows and archery. So it says carbon fibers are also used to coat the current glass and foam arrows used by archers. I'd like to just change that one word. Current is okay, but I tend to, I think I prefer modern. It just sounds a little more elevated. So that's the one tiny adjustment I could make there. And then last but not least, I've got these materials increase the speed and also the accuracy of each shot and also means the same thing, right? So I don't think I need both words side by side. This is an easy one. Let's just take one of the words out. It makes sense just like so. And that's, a, that's the best way to go. So we've finished revising what we started with. <laughs> and oddly enough, when you look at our word count, we're pretty much back to where we started. We started with 99 words. Now we've got 98. So we did take some things out, we added things in, but we're still not at that minimum word count. This is a relatively easy thing to fix because technically we actually aren't finished our paragraph. We haven't structured it appropriately yet. There's no concluding statement. All we've done is offered a topic sentence introducing what we're, we're discussing. And then we've got three specific examples of the types of equipment that have improved. And we have done a good job of showing how that equipment has improved the athlete's performances. So that part's done quite well, but we haven't concluded. Usually a concluding statement will summarize the main idea. Sometimes it might even make a statement to look ahead to the future and what could come next. So let's add a sentence or two here at the end and we'll make sure that we get above 100 words and we'll finish the paragraph appropriately. So right here, let's summarize first what we were talking about. So do you see our opening sentence? I'll read it out loud, just think of the ideas. The opening sentence says, technological advancements in sporting equipment have greatly improved athletic performances in many sporting events. We're going to say the same thing, but in different language. We're going to paraphrase that. Let's try this. The evolution of sports equipment has provided athletes with more opportunities to improve performance and set new records. Same idea, different language. And that's exactly what you want to do on your test. Never repeat yourself. Always use synonyms and paraphrased ideas. 
if we've got time, let's add that one statement to look ahead to the future. Something like this would work well here. So athletic gains will likely continue to occur as technology is developed further. Yeah, so I think that's a nice way to end. There's one more tiny revision I would recommend we try, and it has to do with the way these last two sentences fit together. It's correct the way it is now, but we can choose right here, instead of using a period, we can choose to use a semicolon, which is what that orange arrow is pointing to. And then when we use a semicolon, we have to then use a smaller case letter on the sentence that comes next. So again, both are correct, but we use a semicolon when the meaning in the sentences are very closely connected. And I think when you look at our conclusion, you would agree that those two meanings go together quite nicely. And I think too, because we haven't used a semicolon anywhere else in the writing, it's nice for us to demonstrate to the readers that we actually know how to create different structures. We know how to use different punctuation and so on correctly. So again, the more variety you can show in your writing and the more complexity you can add, the higher your score will be overall. So we're finished with the revisions. We have achieved the word count. We're now at 127 words, which is fantastic. We're over that 100 mark, so that's great. I'd like to just read the whole thing out loud one more time to all of us listening right now, making sure we're happy with it. Let's double check our revisions are actually correct. So it says, technological advancements in sporting equipment have greatly improved athletic performances in many sporting events, most notably the Olympic Games. For example, weightlifters now use dumbbell bars that are covered with rubber, allowing them to grip the bars more firmly and lift heavier weights. Using carbon fiber technology developed in the construction of airplanes, lightweight bicycles now weigh under four pounds and can be ridden faster than any time in the past. Carbon fibers are also used to coat the modern glass and foam arrows used by archers. These materials increase the speed and the accuracy of each shot. The evolution of sports equipment has provided athletes with more opportunities to improve performance and set new records. Athletic gains will likely continue to occur as technology is developed further. There much better than the way it was when we started. Now, again, we've been talking together for just over 17 minutes. On your test, you've got 10 minutes to write your, your draft and to read it back and make your revisions there. All of these discussions that we've been having now in detail, of course, are going to take place in your mind and quickly at that. All right, so I point that out. Again, we're explaining things very clearly today. So everybody has a really thorough understanding of what to do. But again, you do need to be conscious of your time on the actual test. So this will take practice at home to get really fast at making your revisions before you go into the actual test. Anyway, let's summarize what we've done here, I guess. So when you're proofreading your work with your writing skills, I think there are two different skill sets really you need to consider. So the content and the structure would be the first. So when we write a paragraph like we did today, of course we need to introduce the main topic and focus our answer right in the beginning. This is the topic sentence of our paragraph. So we did that today by explaining that improvements to equipment have also improved athletic performance in the Olympic Games. That was what the question was asking us to do. We need also to make sure that all of our details connect well together. So again, when you're reading it back, just, just look for uh, coherence, look for ways to smooth out those ideas. I think what we did is we looked at our first example with the dumbbells. All we needed to do was add in that small transition. We said, for example, and then we launched into the middle part of the paragraph. So adding one or two transitions sometimes can, can make the world of difference in the way that these ideas connect. Academic vocab is crucial. So although our ideas always made sense today, we did find areas where we could elevate the language choice a little bit. We just need to make sure that the words we choose are suitable and that they make sense in the context of the question we're writing. We also need to make sure that the vocabulary and the ideas are unique. We don't want to just repeat the same thing over and over. So remember, we took care to make sure that our opening sentence and our concluding sentence expressed the same idea, but they were paraphrased. We used entirely different vocabulary words there. So coming into the kale with a widely developed vocabulary will help you be able to do this a lot more successfully. Knowing synonyms and understanding paraphrase is helpful here. We also took some time today to create some complex sentences. 
So we found some areas where we had some short, simple ideas. And then oftentimes we could um, change up the, the structure just a little bit and add that comma to connect those words together. So again, try your very best to demonstrate a good variety. We don't want to start every sentence the same way, uh, but having a more complexity, more compound sentences, things like that, those will really help your writing too. Now we had to add our conclusion today. In the initial draft, we didn't have any conclusion. So please make sure you summarize your main point. If the question allows for it, if you've got the time, you might want to add one more statement as a as future step or a next step looking ahead. And that tends to tie all the ideas together quite well. Okay, we needed to make sure we achieved our minimum. And we did that today by adding in the conclusion. So again, on your KL test, the short writing has to be at least 100 words. So please make sure you've done that. The other side of it here are the grammar and writing skills. So once you've got the structure done quite well, start looking for things like this. So we did have that one subject verb agreement error in our very first sentence today. And we fixed that up as we went. We did not make any verb tense errors today, but this is actually quite a common problem that we see often. So when you're writing your question or your answer, please decide first off which verb tense is appropriate. So decide, are you writing in the past, the present, the future? What makes sense for the question? And then once you start writing in that tense, we usually maintain that tense. We don't generally switch back and forth throughout the writing. You'll confuse the reader if you bounce around between say past and future and present. So please make sure those verb tenses are correct and that they make sense. Spelling is an issue too for some of us. We only had that one spelling mistake today. But as you're reading, you can quickly revise any mistakes that you might find. Um, we did not make any preposition or article usage errors today, but these are quite common mistakes that people tend to make in their writing. Again, you'll be tired at this section in the test anyway. It's the end of the entire test. Uh, so sometimes we, we miss out on these little details, but I'm hoping that you're saving yourself even a good 45 seconds at the end of your paragraph writing to double check your prepositions are in the right place and you've used the right articles. We do our best with those. Fragments and run-ons can be quite problematic. A sentence fragment is when we have a half sentence. It's not even a complete idea. And what we need to do there is connect it to the next sentence or to the sentence beforehand. We did that a little bit today. I think in our revisions, we actually created a few fragments and we fixed it easily enough by adding uh, that fragment onto another sentence. Run-on sentences are just the opposite though. We did not have any today, but sometimes you'll see a writer who has say two or three main ideas, two or three sentences, and they write them down as one gigantic sentence. That's why we call that a run-on because it just keeps going. And when we make these kinds of mistakes, it's really difficult for the reader to understand what you're talking about. So again, if you've got issues with fragments or run-on sentences in your own writing, these are things you'll definitely want to practice at home to make sure you know how to write a correct sentence structure before coming into the KALE test. Okay, let's leave it at that for today. Please join me next time and we'll continue our skill development. See you then.